Hold on, is this is this Newell or is this the producer? Okay, well, if you could pass, uh, and I, I appreciate the the opportunity very much, and I very much appreciate uh, you know having me on, and that you're you're going to post this on the website. But I would I would like you to pass a, a message to to Mr. Norman, if if you don't mind, that one of the problems with uh, veterans treatment is that uh, you you would have me on to. Uh, to speak to the issue of veteran suicides as a veteran who's dealt with PTSD himself, who's been uh, a counselor for other veterans dealing with PTSD, who has helped uh, hundreds, if not thousands of, of veterans on this issue, and try to tell me that I don't have the right to, to medicate as I see fit, that's, that he's part of the problem. That, that he would have me on, not because I would be happy to just say my piece uh, and express myself and say thank you for the opportunity, but to have, have the host of this radio program uh, claim to believe in freedom anyway and then say, screw you, Adam, you do, you're, I do not respect your freedom that you fought for. He is part of the mentality that leads to us having 20 veteran suicides a day, and I want him to know that. All right. Thank you, sir back and just recently um the libertarian party was in town and uh, several of the vet members of that party uh staged a um, march of the dead veterans to bring awareness to the issue that 20 veterans commit suicide every day and it's been reported uh by uh, the government, that uh, only six of these folks of the 20 a day actually were involved in mental health care within the VA system, uh, which brings to light other issues as it relates to access for that system. And joining us on the line is Adam Kokic, who actually is a Libertarian Party candidate for president of the U.S. and also the host of the March of the Dead Veterans. Welcome to the show, Adam. Hey, thank you so much. So, really appreciate the opportunity to come on and, and bring the uh, awareness of this issue to a new level. You know, Adam, any any time that I see where the veterans are struggling or suffering and trying to uh, get care, I mean, we have a beautiful VA facility here and hear a lot of positive things about it uh, thus far. It's not the same around the country. And when you think about the fact that 20 veterans a day are committing suicide, uh, dealing with issues of PTSD, because we all know that in a time of war, uh, you're going to see things that you don't ordinarily see. And if you just look at Iraq and, Af and Afghanistan, over 4 million people were in those two countries during, during those wars. Yeah. So tell us about this March of the Dead Veterans. Well, what we did was uh, gather up outside the VA in New Orleans on Canal Street. And, you know, I, I, about what you said, there's something really deeply systemically wrong with the VA system as a government bureaucracy uh, attempting to serve veterans. And one of the things that we experienced putting this together in New Orleans is that veterans who were just used, and they have a giant garage, obviously, and we're talking about Sunday morning, gathering at 7 a.m., no one is there, you know, we're not interfering with anything else. We, we had some veterans who were, you know, walking across the property trying to find us, and they were they were kicked off the property for not having an appointment, which is that a veteran who doesn't have an appointment is going to get kicked off VA property for coming in uh, asking for directions. Uh, that, I mean, that's, that's, that's disturbing on a lot of levels. We, we were going to be marching behind a casket as a symbol of uh, our, our fellow veterans who have died by suicide, and... Uh, they it, they went to deliver it erroneously to uh, to the door at the VA and asked, hey, you know, where are we supposed to take this for the event today? And uh, they were just turned away, and we ended up not having the, the casket as, as part of our event. When I went to the VA, just to tell you about my, my personal experience, uh, I was in Fallujah in 2004 with the Marine Corps. And when I got out, uh, I was having trouble sleeping. And I went to the VA, I talked to a shrink for about five minutes, and I walked out of there with a brown paper bag, five prescriptions in it. Three of them had suicide listed as a side effect. The people who are setting the policy for the VA, and by, by the way, about, about what you said about the VA in New Orleans, uh, in, in the course of this uh, March of the Dead Veterans, we were not in 
any way being critical of the VA. It, 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 it's simply the, the bigger problems of it being uh, something that is answerable to uh, politicians and bureaucrats as opposed to veterans themselves, and the fact that the drug war makes it illegal for veterans to enjoy freedom to medicate how they see fit. And yeah, but that's a libertarian. That's a libertarian party issue. You know the no, issue. That, no, that, what, no, no, that's a, you, no, 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 no. That is a universal human issue. You have the right to decide what you put in your own body. And it's just that the Democrats and Republicans have sold out on that point. Well, we'll agree to disagree on that. But I think that the fact of the matter, though, is that the mental health care delivery system in this country as a whole is broken. Absolutely. And, and the point that I was trying to make earlier is that if there's going to be a delivery system that needs to be sacrosanct, it's obviously for those who volunteer to risk their lives abroad for, for the salvation of our liberties and our rights and, and the privileges that we enjoy in this country. And that should be, first and foremost, out front, and that system should be sacrosanct, is what I believe. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it should, it should be, uh, I, don't, I don't know how you're using the word sacrosanct, but absolutely, it should absolutely be uh, a priority for society. And it's not. And, and, and that's, that's really the problem right now is that we, we have, a, you know, a sort of awareness, but there's also a, a denial about this. And there are two things that, uh, that are really important in acknowledging about this. Because when, when you look at what's happened in Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, you look at the, the nature of those wars, you look at how, uh, you know, how many lives they were based upon. Uh, when, when you come home for one of these conflicts, it, it's really hard to lie to yourself and say it was justified. My buddies who died in combat died for a good cause. And when you can't tell yourself that, when you can't hide behind that any longer, it's, it's, it's really troubling. And a lot of the other veterans organizations out there, and they do great work, and I will say about the VA, the, the personnel who work there generally take pay cuts compared to what they could be making in other places in order to help veterans, in order to work in, in a government facility. And, you know, from my experience, the individuals who I've worked with at the VA have all been, uh, you know, relatively polite and professional, and, and, and I, by and large, think they're, you know, they're, they're trying to do the best job they can. But when you fail to address the political issues, you say this is a, you depoliticize it. What you do is you allow for the old parties to basically kill veterans on behalf of the pharmaceutical industry. And a big part of this is cannabis, MDMA, psilocybin, known treatments and cures for PTSD that are kept illegal. If a veteran wants to pursue something that he knows is going to be or she is going to be effective in treating PTSD, they're a criminal. If they want to take pharmaceuticals that are going to lead them to commit suicide, yeah, they can go to the VA. Well, I, you know, I, as I said before, I don't necessarily agree with the science of what you're what you're advocating. Uh, Do you believe there. in the freedom of it? Do you believe that because I risk my life overseas to defend your freedom, that I should have the freedom to decide what I want to medicate with? Not if it's not otherwise illegal. No, I don't agree. Oh, so you're, oh no, so, so you're saying no? You do not believe in my freedom. No, I, no, I believe right to decide what I put on my own body. I, I believe in the body. basic freedoms, but I also believe in an ordered and structured society. There needs to be restrictions on some of those freedoms that it just can't be footloose and fancy free. And you can do what you want, when you want, how you want, no matter yeah, how, no, how it affects anybody else. If you, if you believe, if you believe in freedom, there's only one restriction: the right to. Well, no, that's what you say. That's that's your opinion. opinion. That's not everybody's opinion. But I think you minimize. That, that was, that I think you. Minimize. Was founded on. I think you it's minimize the march of dead veterans when you try to incorporate political ideals and beliefs as it relates to you being able to take MDMA, um, which is other. My mind just went blank as to um, that, that's a club drug, uh, and that was originally and, developed as a therapy drug for couples in the eighties, and it was made illegal because a couple people were abusing it. And since then, its benefits have been taken away because it's too good of a competitor for the pharmaceutical drugs that you. Well, have the to same thing is happening to opioids exactly. right now. The same thing is happening right. to opioid use. They thought that it was beneficial, and it is in the management of pain. But they also realized that that now it's completely and totally addictive. In fact, in fact. Your very population that you're talking about that's committing suicide 20 a day, many of which are addicted to opioids. Right, that they were given by the VA. Right, right. 
but uh, under your theory, you would have had the freedom to take those opioids as well. They wouldn't have had to. They wouldn't. They wouldn't have had to. They wouldn't have had to because they'd have smoked dope, right? I mean, that's that's the solution. I I just think. I think you my life when I got back from Iraq. And if you want to take that away from veterans, you are violating their freedom and you are increasing the problem of veteran suicide. Well, that that issue may be gone away anyway, okay? But, I mean, the the fact of the matter is is that there's more to a mental health delivery system than the legalization of marijuana. And, I mean, if you think that that that's the panacea solution to everything as it relates to mental health, then we don't have much more to talk about because that's completely unrealistic. Freedom is the answer. What's the question? And if your question is, well, gee, why are veterans killing themselves? I think a big part of that is they don't have the freedom to, to seek treatment that's appropriate for them. But, I mean, you know, when you talk about that day, uh, Adam, excuse me, uh, you know, the, the same thing. The, the Libertarian Party, you know, favors a free market health care system. In fact, a very much... In, not, not in favor of Medicare, Medicaid, or the VA as a whole. Because it's, well, a gover- least, it's a government-run uh, uh, operation. But I will right, tell you, so, having served on a board of a, of, of, of a hospital that is quasi-governmental, they, mm-hmm. there, are, there are not many providers in, in the private health care system that wants to provide mental health because there's restrictions on personal insurance for that. There's a cap, and, and they don't, it's not a moneymaker for them. You so mean with the government with, makes it impossible. I'm sorry. You mean because government makes it unprofitable? No, go, no. Private insurance companies make it right. unprofitable. They don't, but, but yeah, but the, no, no, no. All the reasons that you pointed out just now about why it's unprofitable were government reasons. No, no, no. That's not, that's not what I said. I said in the private sector, they don't want to do mental health because it's not a money right. maker for because them. No, you said because there are restrictions where do those restrictions come the from the restrictions IT come from the private insurers in the private market they don't have they have a cap we on what they're know. willing to pay for mental health do you really think we have a free market in insurance and you want to blame the market for the problems in the medical insurance industry that's absurd sir well i, I mean we could we could get into this it's argument especially one in the era of obamacare wow that you would suggest we have a free market for insurance and blame the uh, peaceful cooperative interactions of the free I, market for problems caused by government. I don't believe that Obamacare. I don't believe that Obamacare fostered a free market system. Of course not. It made okay. it less free market, obviously. Uh, and, and and I would agree with with that point, but I, I I just think you minimize if you want to highlight the trials and tribulations of vets. In mental health delivery, and and the fact that six of the twenty vets a day are, are the are in the VA system and the others are not, uh, mm-hmm. I think that highlights another problem, and it could be a deficiency in that delivery system. Well, most veterans are smart enough to know that uh, they should go to the VA as little as possible. They should seek treatment elsewhere when they have the alternative, especially when you can get real treatment elsewhere. And with the VA, they'll push pharmaceuticals on you that are going to lead you to be more likely to commit suicide. But marijuana would not be considered a pharmaceutical. Correct. That's a plant. Okay, it's a plant. So there are no plant-based medicines that are out there that that are governed by the FDA or otherwise. Oh, of course, there are lots. Okay, uh, but the right, FDA well. and what the what, what the uh, what the VA pushes on on the. I mean, there's another one that's that's a really valuable one in in treating uh, a lot of mental health issues called kratom, and of course, the FDA is now pushing to criminalize that as well. And and that's that's, that's you know this is the, the heart of this issue is freedom. Well, do you believe, do you believe that there's not some science behind that, or are they just they just woke up one morning on a whim and said kratom, you're out. I don't like the way it sounds. It's history. No, it's more likely that the same people who help make marijuana illegal are behind this push. The pharmaceutical well, they just they just approve they just congressmen and Democrats they just approve a marijuana based derivative uh, for epilepsy. Yeah, and what what's really sick about this is that for years children in this country with seizure disorders have died because they didn't have access to CBD. Now, fortunately, we have fifty state access to CBD, and you don't have a problem with seizure kids dying and having hundreds of seizures a day. But more fundamentally than that, why should a veteran who, as you said, fought for freedom in the United States, have to wait for government permission? For government to judge the science, which it gets wrong so many times, the FDA, as Dr. Mary Ruard has proven, has been responsible for tens 
of millions of deaths in this country by allowing unsafe drugs on the market and putting uh, and keeping safe drugs off the market. But what's years. the alternative? You letting want, letting everybody letting people. anybody make representations about about substances that they, that they put out there that's going to be the cure all for everything. Uh, freedom and responsibility go hand in hand. If you want the freedom to put what you want in your and own how body, many you deaths have to occur before you before you decide that proposition is not worth it. I don't know. You don't have an answer to that question, do you? Because we, I, I it, didn't hear the entire it, question. I, I think said, how, I mean, people that are out there abusing the system and they're making representations about drugs that, that, that are, you know, are not, uh, there's not an efficacy from a medical standpoint right. on it. I mean, right. we got to, we, David, can you stay through yes, the break? We should, we should I mean, I mean yes, Adam, I keep calling you David. Adam, can you stay through the break? I got to get to a break. Yeah. All right. Happy to enjoy we'll, this very much. All right, we'll be right back. We'll continue this conversation when we return. Adam Korsh, uh, he uh, put, Kokish, I'm sorry, uh, he put together the March of the Dead Veterans. We'll be right back. We're back, and we're talking to Adam Kokish. Uh, from the, he's a Libertarian Party candidate for President of the United States and a host of the March of the Dead Veterans. The Libertarian Party was just recently in the city of New Orleans, and we appreciate Sam. I understand they had a very successful convention uh, here. And Adam, you know, as we were t- just talking about this issue, and I don't want to get all wrapped up into this Libertarian Party platform or this complete total freedom belief what do you see as the alternative for vets tr- that are struggling with ptsd and other post-war challenges that they have well i think the most important thing is for veterans to be able to come together and realize that we're not alone in facing these struggles a lot of people who commit suicide uh, feel isolated and that's that's a major aggravating factor and when you go to the VA and they turn you away, or they say, here's some pharmaceuticals, go away, it's, uh, it's very disheartening. And, and I ran a peer support group when I was living in Washington, D.C., for veterans called Homefront Battle Buddies. And back then, uh, this was in 2007, 2008, uh, marijuana was, was uh, very illegal, much more than it is today. And the, the veterans who said, oh, i got to respect the law, I, I can't do anything illegal, because that would be bad. That would be too American, just like the, the founders of this country breaking the law and stuff. And it's, it's kind of ironic that, that we're talking about this the day after uh, Independence Day, which is really a day to celebrate uh, rebellion and, uh, you know, tax cheats and, and people who said, you know, screw authority, we'd rather be free. Well, the, the value of that is that the veterans who were obedient who said, I'm not going to do anything illegal, uh, many times ended up taking the pharmaceuticals and drinking themselves in a bottle and killing themselves. Whereas the ones who, who were able to smoke cannabis in civil disobedience, or at least in defiance of the law, now cannabis is not a cure for PTSD, at least for, for most people, but it is a, a symptomatic treatment that makes it possible to get the kind of talk therapy that can be uh, described as a cure, at least for PTSD. And, and that, that fundamental you know, right to freedom is, is something that I think every veteran can say we fought for. And it was really offensive to hear President Trump say, I'm sorry, I want to get stay, stay on topic with your question, though. Um, for, for those who, who are, are facing those serious problems, I think getting with other veterans, community organizations, getting with veterans in your community, um, you know, finding treatment that works for you, doing the research yourself on the Internet, uh, exploring the options, and, and not trusting uh, the, the, well, what you're told at the VA by a lot of people who are restricted in what they can say by the law. I, th- I think that's really important. Having an open mind or, you know, uh, believing Adam, in freedom is actually important for pursuing real treatment. Adam, i got to get to a break. I want to thank you for joining us and, and appreciate you uh, saying your your point of view as it relates to this. We'll be right back. Give us a call, 260-1870 or Texas at 870 This is Newell on WWL. 